Hello, I'm Cara Dahl Russell and welcome back to the Story Behind the Music, a series of pre-concert lectures and after my lecture and introduction you can click on the link here and listen to one version of the performance. For today's work you'll definitely want to look in the description underneath for multiple links because this is a work that has been transcribed and arranged for many different combinations and I'll try to include examples of several of those so you can kind of compare and contrast the different arrangements and the way they sound. The Meditation from Thais by Jules Massinet is one of the most well-known and beloved melodies in classical music literature. Even if you don't listen to a lot of classical music, chances are that you've heard this work and you may just not know the name that goes with it. Less known than the work itself is the storyline of the opera from which it arose, and I'd like to share that with you today to give you a little framework on the piece. A great deal of Massenet's music remains fairly obscure today, unfortunately. One of the pieces that I often perform at Christmas time is his art song, Noël des Fleurs, a really magical work. It truly gives me chills every time I finish performing it. I often play and sing it. I have also accompanied singers with it. Uh, it's a piece about flowers raining down from heaven on the Madonna and Child. And Massenet also has many lovely solo piano works that are almost never heard. Some of them are lushly romantic, and others of them are early works of minimalism and very modern in their structure and their kind of almost new agey feel or the repetitiveness of very small increments of music. So I would encourage any of you who play piano to seek out Massenet's piano works. So today I'll be talking about his best known and most frequently played melody. His opera Thais premiered in 1894 with the final revision premiered in 1898. And just for a little framework, that 1898 was the year before Poulenc was born. So Massenet was up and running at the time when Poulenc was born. Thais was one of a multitude of operas at this time period that were set in what they called exotic climes. These exotic settings allowed for the actresses to be scantily draped, which meant it was easy to get the gentlemen to leave their clubs to come see the chorus girls and to hear the music, of course. There's a famous story about Wagner's dismal reception in Paris uh, due to his insisting that he include a ballet in the first act of his opera Parsifal. The management said, no, the, the ballet must be in the third act. The gentlemen do not leave their club and arrive at the theater until act three. But Wagner refused to music, and it was considered a major contributor to the failure of Parsifal in Paris because there were no flashes of thigh for the gentlemen to see in act three. While Thais is one of Massenet's most performed operas, it is still rarely a part of standard opera repertoire. And performances of it may be only available to see once or twice every generation. Part of this is because the role of Thais is considered an exceptionally difficult vocal role. Modern interpreters have included Carol Neblet, Anna Moffo, Beverly Sills, Leontine Price, Renee Fleming, and Elizabeth Futral. Set in Byzantine Egypt, Thais has also been considered very scandalous, especially when it premiered, because it had a blatant mixture of the sacred and the profane, of religion and eroticism in contrast. The story tells of the love and lust of our hero for Thais, the beautiful courtesan and devotee of Venus, who attempts to seduce him. It's an ancient storyline, 
But just as Julia Roberts played the prostitute with a heart of gold in Pretty Woman, Athenael reproves Thais Lust. The hero says, no, no. And this meditation is not only the meditation from the opera Thais, it is centrally placed within the opera, and it is actually the meditation of the character Thais. This music represents her meditation on her life of carnality and her conversion towards purity and Christianity. If you've ever seen the book or the film, The English Patient, and if you haven't, there's a little bit of a spoiler here, a big spoiler actually, there is in that story a particularly grueling end for the heroine who was ostensibly left in a safe place where she would be later retrieved and saved. The end of Thais is very reminiscent. Athenael and Thais escape together across the desert, but Thais is unable to go any farther. So Athenael leaves her in a convent to wait for him, and then he journeys on, but he becomes a monk himself and abandons her. Years later, or an hour later, as the case may be, he then has two dreams of her, an erotic dream that keeps the gentleman in the box seats happy, and then a second dream that she is dying. He returns to the convent to find her near death, and she is also in a delirious joy and describes the heavenly glory and the angels awaiting her as she dies in his arms. In the 1800s, death from illness was very much a part of life. Medicine practice was still growing. So this ending, this heavenly triumph of death was common stuff in literature, plays, and opera of the day. One of the reasons that this opera is probably not performed is because this storyline is feels very melodramatic and dated despite the exotic setting it, for today's audiences. It's kind of kind of a snooze in terms of the storyline itself. So we have this lovely meditation from the middle of the opera as Thais is having to confront herself and her past and her the life that she wants it to be. You can click on this link to hear one version of this work. And then down below will be other versions. As I said, there are multiple arrangements of this that are often heard from orchestral works to chamber works in different combinations. Enjoy the music of Jules Massinet. Thank you.